Right guys, uh, this is just an update really on my on my Huey scale build here. Uh, those of you who've been following my thread will know that I'm currently working on uh, on, on the on the nav lights. Uh, and to be fair, I was quite pleased with them uh, in the end. But I have to say, the circuit board was horrendous. I've had to push that right up inside that canopy there. It's added, added 32 grams to my overall project. There had to be a better way. I've been in development, coding development, programming development for uh, about the last 30 years. So I decided it might be time to, to think about microprocessor controls. So I put together this year circuit here, just using one 8 pin microprocessor. This bit here is representing the LEDs that are currently on the on, on the Huey over there. This camera's struggling to uh, to cope with this I think. I hope you're following this anyway. Okay but not only have I built into uh, nav lights into this chip here we've got several other functions. We've got low voltage uh, signaling if we attach a battery, a main battery that is not fully charged. We've got a critically discharged warning, uh, which, which we'll show you in a bit. We've got a signal here supplying this, this gain uh, to, to the gyro. So that frees up a, a channel on my uh, six channel receiver here, which we're using as a searchlight, which is activated by this, this switch here. So let's just, let's just start the circuit up. So first of all, this, this is simulating my uh, my LiPo main battery, so let's just put that just over slightly over 12 volts as a, as a fully charged battery. And then we'll just switch on the on the power. Okay, so this, this LED here should blink twice then to say that it's, a, that it's in its version 2. And this is simulating the, the white tail LED. This is simulating the, the beacon. If you notice there's a, there's a pause, a, a long pulse just now and that means that it's actually in head hold mode. I'm going to switch my transmitter on so we can see the gyro that should be in head hold mode. Activated into head hold mode and if I wobble the, the board around we can see that's activating and if I move move the sticks we can see that it's that's giving a, a head held mode response. I have tried uh, doing this before with, with gyros, perfectly acceptable. Uh, I'm just basically uh, simulating the pulse, uh, which is about 1.75 milliseconds at the minute, in, into that into that gyro, which puts it into head held mode uh, of the right sensitivity. Okay, so that's that. If I if I flick this switch here, you see that my uh, my surge light comes on. You probably did notice there's a slight delay there when, when I switch it off. And that's because because everything's going off here, and this this the signal to the gyro has to take precedent over everything. It's done by interrupts. If there's an interrupt going on and it's currently sending the 1.75 millisecond signal here, then it actually delays the response of looking at that switch because that's deemed to be obviously less of a lesser priority. Uh, this this signal must go every 20 milliseconds, and it must send a 1.75 millisecond pulse every time. Now all that can be set up in, in the code on the screen and, and, and I can write and I can change that, that gyro setting if I wish. Okay so what happens if if we connect a battery that's slightly low voltage? Let's do that, let's switch it off, switch it back on again, see the lights come on, we get the two pulses that we're using version 3 and we've got this and we've got this this, this this pulsing that's actually means critically low low voltage and that's because I have to get a little bit too low for me critical critically low means that it's nowhere near fully charged it's on about 11 volts that now at the moment let's just turn that up to just slightly under 12 so it's so it's going to give me a a signal that it's a, it's it's just slightly very discharged it's not fully charged at this battery let's switch that off again switch it back on and we should get just a nice little 
steady pulse. Nope. A little bit lower. There we go. That's the that, that's the not fully discharged. It's not fully discharged battery, but it's not fully charged neither. So it's sort of sort of midway. All these settings can can be changed in the programming. Okay, it'll do that for about 30 seconds. After that, it'll go back to normal response, assuming that, that the pilot wants to fly anyway. And of course, the the, the actual lights work as well. Okay, switch so switch that off. Put it back to a fully charged battery. Switch it back on. Let's switch the uh, let's switch, switch the, the, the surge light off. Okay, so what happens if your bat if you're flying away and your battery decides to to, to fall when it gets to about uh, about nine volts? If you can see both here, but I'm adjusting the battery voltage at the, at the same time as it drops. It actually stops all the LEDs flashing to warn the pilot that is now below voltage and should really be landing. If it's just a peak and the battery voltage comes back up to an acceptable level, like that, after a while it will pause for at least 10 seconds to ensure that the pilot is aware that his, his battery uh, fell below 9.3 volts for a split second and then it will just start pulsing away again. Uh, so well, it's recovered, you can fly a little bit longer if you wish, but just be aware that you're your main battery there fell to an unacceptable level. I think you'll you'll agree that well, this is the circuit now, which completely replaces this circuit, and I think overall a good little project.